Since the 3.2 update, vehicles have been in a really dominant state. It's not unusual to see games being completely one-sided because one team is crushing the other with superior vehicle use. Currently, I feel like a lot of players haven't grasped that if the enemy is bringing an overwhelming armor force, then you need to switch off your current role and play engineer to help your team deal with tanks. As unrewarding as playing an anti-tank role currently is, it is critical if you want to help your team win. So for the past few weeks I've been going full anti-tank infantry, trying to figure out the best strategies to deal with the hordes of metal war machines being thrown my way. In this video, I hope to share useful tips I found while on my conquest and provide you with the full details of all AT equipment. The M5, the Javelin, the TGM and more. But before we talk about our tools, let's understand our enemy. Let's talk about the six main vehicles giving us trouble. We have the main battle tanks, the M1A5 and the T28. The real tank, the EMKV-90 TOR. The MAV, the EBLC Ram, the EBAA Wildcat and the M5C Bolt. The way I see it, they are currently so strong for two main reasons. The countermeasures in the built-in repair function which they currently have access to and the power of the repair tool. Thermal smoke blocks and breaks locks. This can be popped in order to save you from one locking or approached missile. It will cause the missile to fly off in a random direction. The thermal smoke is pretty much the only competition for the smoke slot in most vehicles. As soon as you activate it, the countermeasure is in immediate effect. Once activated, it takes around 35 seconds to recharge. On top of this already strong ability, the smoke deployed can give engineering pilots an opportunity for a sneaky repair. The Active Protection System or APS is the big daddy of all countermeasures. Once activated, the APS will rise up out the top of your vehicle with a little green light attached for roughly 7.5 seconds. During this time, anything that is thrown your way will be immediately countered and you will take no damage. This counters missiles, rockets, mines, C5 and tank shells. The only thing that this won't counter is bullets and real tank rounds. So for example, an AA using the dual 30mm will still be able to hit its shots against your vehicle. Once the APS is on cooldown, the colour of the light changes to red. This is your opportunity to attack. APS doesn't break locks, so if you fire a locked missile and it reaches the vehicle by the time the APS has run out, it will still hit and deal damage. In general, you'll want to hold all fire against the tanks as soon as you see that green light, since you'll be wasting your shots. The APS takes around 20 seconds to recharge after it's gone offline. Last but not least we have the repair function which can be used to repair a vehicle for 24 damage. Repair is applied over 5 seconds. This is great to use if you need a quick and safe repair between fights. The repair will be interrupted if any amount of damage is caused while the effect is occurring. The repair will be back up to reuse after 15 seconds. Now that engineers always have access to the repair tool, this means that almost all good vehicle drivers will have the ability to repair any damage. All they have to do is retreat to a location in cover, hop out and heal up. The tool repairs roughly 6.5 damage a second and can run for 8 seconds before needing to cool down. This is strong when you're dealing with one driver, but when you have multiple passengers willing to hop out and repair, vehicles turn into indestructible nightmares to deal with. If you see an enemy pop out of a vehicle to repair it, they should be your absolute priority, no matter what role you're taking on the battlefield. Now that we've discussed the problem, let's discuss the usual loadout you'll see from these vehicles and why they're so difficult to deal with. Both the main battle tanks and the real tanks will typically have thermal smoke and APS equipped. Since both of these use separate equipment slots, once one is on cooldown, they'll just use the other and then when both are out, they'll pull back to find cover to wait for them both to cool down. Combine this with the obscene amounts of damage that these can dish out and you have yourself a fight if you're unfortunate enough to take on one of these yourself. With the MAV, thermal smoke and repair will almost always be equipped. And while these are both good, what makes the MAV so survivable is how thick the armor is. Easily the toughest vehicle to crack. 
Combine this with the absurd number of seats, each with their own ornament, and it becomes an almost impossible vehicle to sneak up upon, and an even tougher beast to take down. To top it off, it's a global spawn vehicle, which means anyone on the team can spawn onto it if there's a free space. This makes them an absolute priority to deal with, since leaving one of these up means that you'll have bad guys pouring onto your objectives. The ram is usually equipped with APS. The main strength which accounts for its survivability is definitely its speed. As soon as a driver is in any sort of trouble, they'll immediately pop APS and completely leave the scene. Usually, they'll run off to repair and return to the fight with full health and the APS charged. They have lower armor than most vehicles, but if your shots don't hit, then the lack of armor won't help much. They also come with an ability to drop a team insertion beacon, which can be deployed so that all of your team can spawn on its location. With the Wildcat, Thermal Smoke and Repair are almost always equipped. Not the most survivable vehicle, definitely one of the lower health pools compared to the other vehicles, but if not dealt with, they can cause massive problems for your air vehicles and infantry. Definitely don't underestimate the Bolt. It may be equipped with Thermal Smoke and or the Repair, but I found that most people typically run one of these two for survivability. Mainly effective when used by a well coordinated team of two since the passenger seat deals most of the damage. They have low armor and the drivers can be shot out of it by shooting through the window. That being said, if they are used at an optimal range and keep moving, these can be an absolute ordeal to take out. They aren't too common anymore since they share the same spawn as the MAV, but I figured it would be interesting to highlight these either way. An important feature which some people might not know is that vehicles take different amount of damages depending on where you hit them. Generally, they'll take the most damage from behind and the least damage from the front, with turrets and the sides taking damage somewhere between these two values. Now that we know what we're up against, let's look at our tools we can bring to the battlefield to use against them. The M5 is as basic as it gets. It's a dumbfire rocket, you point at what you want to explode and it does. Since 3.2, the M5 has a much faster velocity, which was a much needed buff. The scope can be used to determine where the rocket will land after a specific distance. I recommend hitting spot on the vehicle before firing. This will give you the range, and then you can convert this with the scope line to use. Here are the damage numbers. I think the important takeaway from examining the damage numbers is that if you're consistently hitting the rear of vehicles, you're going to reduce the number of rockets needed to take them out. Based on my games, the M5 I would recommend using in close to medium ranges. While you can be effective at long ranges if you get used to the rangefinder, hits do become less likely. Let's look at the pros and cons. Because it's dumb fire, it means that it's much harder for vehicles to anticipate since they have no warning, meaning that APS becomes less valuable against it, and Thermal Smoke, which is the most prevalent counter amongst all vehicles, has no effect on it. It has decent splash damage, which means you can damage the tank and kill the guy repairing it in one. It's versatile in the sense that it can be used against anything, tanks, aircraft or infantry. You can immediately fire it and pop back into cover. As it has no lock time or guide time, this means that it's safer to use than the other launchers. It can lock onto a vehicle if it's been soft lammed, tracer dotted or row hacked, but then it does become subject to thermal smoke counter. Now let's briefly discuss the negatives. You have to aim your shots and missing any of your three rounds can be really bad. Given that it's about aiming and anticipating drop in travel time, you would expect higher damage for being one of the hardest launchers to hit. The Javelin, the new anti-tank launcher. This is a lock-on required missile launcher which packs a punch. You aim it directly at a ground vehicle and it takes two seconds to lock on. Once locked, you're able to fire, the missile heads up a little bit, then flies directly towards its target. The range of the Javelin is about 450 meters, beyond that it won't lock on. When used against a soft lammed, tracer dotted or row hacked target, the missile will do a special top down attack, where it flies high up in the air then proceeds to fly towards its target before slamming down and dealing bonus damage. 
If you're running the Javelin, then you're going to want to take these shots whenever the opportunity arises. Here are the damage numbers. From my experience, I would recommend using this at medium to long ranges, with the caveat that the missile is very slow, so those longer shots might not always hit the vehicle if it can move into cover or pops countermeasures. Here are some of the pros of using the Javelin. Easily the most damage from an infantry based launcher with the potential to deal even more with its top down attack. If of course you have a sniper helping you tag vehicles. If all of your shots manage to hit, you'll be able to take out a main battle tank as an individual. Since it's a lock on weapon it doesn't take a lot of skill to use. Just aim, lock and shoot. Now let's discuss some of the negatives. Since it's a lock-on weapon, it's very susceptible to thermal smoke. Drivers also have a warning that a missile is incoming, so if they're running APS they'll usually pop it to have the missile intercepted. This means that this weapon frequently misses, since you're usually guaranteed a single miss per vehicle you come up against. Compound this with the time it takes to fire a shot, and it can be super frustrating, making the weapon feel very unrewarding. Due to the lock on time, using it in close range makes you very easy to kill. You'll have to stand still for 2 seconds, and unless the vehicle is distracted with something else, you'll frequently find yourself on the wrong end of a tank shell. Remember that when you're locking onto a vehicle, the driver gets a pointer which directs them towards where they're being locked from. If you have to lock on in close range, be sure to pop down a smoke on yourself and use the javelin to figure out where the vehicle is. As you can see from the damage numbers, you don't get any bonuses for well placed shots. You're restricted to using the javelin against ground vehicles unless they're tagged by a friendly sniper using a soft lamb, tracer dart or row hack. Liz's TGM While I still think that the TGM is a primarily an anti-air weapon, you can definitely be effective against all ground vehicles. You shoot this missile and you control it into your target. I'm not going to go into too many details here since I already did in my how to actually deal with choppers video, but remember that it has a boost. Here are the damage numbers. Since you can control the missile, it's very effective at any range. If you're sure that the shot is going to land, you can ditch the missile early and it will fly straight until it reaches your target or runs out of fuel. This can save you some time standing around being vulnerable. Let's talk about the pros. Because there is no lock on, it's not susceptible to thermal smoke. Hitting your shots against slow ground vehicles is very easy, and with a little practice you can also guarantee hits against the faster vehicles too. The missile can still be APS'd, but if the enemy doesn't see or hear it coming, then you'll likely get a hit. The rounds replenish automatically, so you don't require a support to keep giving you ammo. This can be a good thing or a bad thing depending on your situation. It's nice not needing to depend on your teammates for ammo, but it's frustrating to be right next to an angel crate knowing that you cannot get your rounds back. Did I mention that they're really effective against air vehicles? Since the TGM isn't an equipment and comes with Liz by default, you can carry a T-Mine, C5 or an EOD bot in addition to your launcher. This flexibility can make you a force to be reckoned with. Another benefit of being Liz is her armor hunter perk which will help you seek out vehicles which have taken damage. Now let's discuss the cons. The missiles can be shot down pretty easily, since they're very easy to see. To prevent this, you can avoid going directly towards your target, instead swinging your missile around and attacking from a different angle. While you're guiding the missile, you're pretty vulnerable. Make sure you're somewhere safe to launch from. There's almost no splash damage, which means if you want to use this against infantry, you'll need to get a direct hit to kill. And there's no interactions with sniper locks. The anti-tank mines. What's not to love about the anti-tank mines? You set them on a path which you expect enemy vehicles to use, then wait for the kills to roll in. When an enemy vehicle rolls over these, they will detonate dealing a large amount of damage. Not super exciting, but always satisfying when you see those hit markers pop up. Here are the damage numbers. I recommend placing two of your mines together, since this is how many it takes to deal with most vehicles, then placing your third elsewhere. You can also use these offensively by throwing them straight at vehicles. This is very dangerous since usually the blast will kill you in the process, but it will deal a large amount of damage to the tank. 
If you're dealing with a camping vehicle, you can drop the mines beside them and shoot them to detonate them. Here are the positives of the anti-tank mines. They cause a massive amount of damage to all vehicles, and since you can place and forget about them, you don't really need any sort of skill to use them. You can replenish mines by picking up enemy mines. Head up to the enemy mines and press the interact button to add them to your inventory. If you find two enemy mines lying next to each other, if you want to be very sneaky, you can pick one of them up and replace it with your own mine. To the enemy, they'll see a friendly mine icon on the map, so they won't avoid it, and the detonation will blow up the two mines and deal double the damage. The downside here is that friendly vehicles are just as likely to fall for this trap, and it will work on them. You can set traps against the abandoned vehicles on the map. Just drop a mine in front of them and you'll usually come out with a few free, albeit cheesy kills. Now the cons of anti-tank mines. Unless you're playing Liz, you have to choose AT mines over a rocket launcher, which I just can't see people doing since they're not very exciting. It's difficult to use these as an offensive tool unless you're willing to die in the process. Sometimes vehicles will roll over them and they will not detonate. It's hard to tell if this is intentional or if it's a glitch. The mines are very obvious, so a lot of the times vehicles will just shoot them and detonate them before they cause any issues. You can only drop a maximum of three, after that old mines start disappearing. While not unique to engineers, you can still equip C5. Get up close, throw these onto a vehicle and detonate them for an easy kill, provided the enemy doesn't kill you first. Here are the damage numbers. I honestly think these are best used by other classes, specifically Assault, since you'll be able to use McKay's zipline or Sundance's wingsuit to close the distance better than with any of the engineers. As I mentioned previously, you'll usually want to use these with Liz over Boris or Crawford. Personally, I would choose anti-tank mines over these, but it comes down to preference. Here are the pros. They're very good damage against all vehicles, if you can get close enough to stick them. Also, even if you don't manage to get the detonation off, the C5 is still there and can be shot and detonated by friendlies. You can replenish C5 the same way as you can AT mines by picking up the enemy C5, however finding undetonated C5 is much more unlikely. These are very effective against infantry. Throw them over cover or into a crowded hallway and watch the kills rack up. Here are the negatives. You'll need to put yourself in a lot of risk in order to get vehicle kills with these. The payoff is definitely worth it, but expect to die maybe 50% of the time. You can combine these with an EMP or smoke grenades to increase these odds. Similar to the mines, it's difficult to recommend these over one of the launchers. So unless you're playing Liz, I probably wouldn't recommend them. The C5 can be easily APS'd, which can lead to a lot of frustration since you'll need that APS'd C5 in order to get the kill in most cases. Now what if I told you that there is a weapon that all classes can run, that can deal more DPS than most of the launchers at decent ranges? An AT weapon that has been sitting there right under our noses the entire game, but has been mostly neglected by the community. I'm talking about the AP Underbarrel Grenade Launcher. This thing is criminally underrated for dealing quick chunks of damage against all vehicles. It's absolutely amazing and I would recommend it with every engineer build. This of course does limit you to the following weapons, the AK-24, the SVAR, the LCMG and the SVK. Which is a little limiting, but three quarters of these weapons are some of the best weapons in the game. And with the LCMG, you can still have your weapon proficiency of the engineer. Here are the damage numbers. Let's quickly discuss the strengths and weaknesses. They can give you that edge to finish off vehicles if you still need one more hit, since it's quicker to switch instead of reload any of the launchers. Since it's a free fire weapon, it's not affected by thermal smoke, and vehicles will have almost no warning, so it's less likely to get APS'd. It's one additional anti-tank option which you can take, and all you miss out upon is an underbarrel or a grip option. You could also use the T menu to switch in and out of it, if you have another preferred option. 
However, you'll usually want this quickly, so I'd recommend having this on your primary slot. Using an ammo crate will be even more efficient, since you'll replenish your gadget ammo and also your underbarrel ammo with every use. It's decently effective on infantry and it can catch people off guard. Now for the weaknesses. If you're dependent on a grip for accuracy, then this option might not be suitable for you. It's restricted to a limited set of weapons. The grenade arc can take some time getting used to, as such the range can be a little restricted if you're unable to master the drop. I was expecting to find a clear cut answer, but I think the loadout you should choose comes down to two things. Do you want to have anti-air potential with some close range options, or do you want to be able to more consistently destroy tanks at close to medium ranges? If you want the first option, then Liz is your girl. I was surprised to see that her TGM actually does decent damage to tanks no matter where you hit them. In fact, more than the M5 versus front armor. I recommend taking the AT mines, but if you prefer C5, then that's completely okay too. And absolutely slap that underbarrel AP launcher onto your weapon. The downside of this is that since you're Liz, you only get two Lissiles before you're out and need to wait for them to replenish. This isn't enough to solo a tank unless you hit both Lissiles and all of your AP grenades, which is a little unlikely. But having close strong range potential with your additional equipment is always great. If you prefer a more consistent way to deal with tanks, then go with the M5, of course with an underbarrel AP launcher. Remember that the M5 can carry 4 shots, but you only spawn with 3, so you should always be on the lookout for ammo crates. This will let you deal with vehicles at decent ranges, but you should avoid front armor shots, since you'll practically be wasting your rounds. If you need to take on a tank from the front, then aim for the turret. Bust out the AP launcher as soon as you're close enough to use it. It's faster to reload and in most cases can give you about 60 damage. The M5 is also very good at warding off transport choppers which are currently very strong. I think Boris is a little stronger in my opinion since your turret can take a little bit of pressure off you, but Crawford's repair ability is best if you plan on supporting friendly armor. Unfortunately I do not think that the Javelin is worth it. While its damage is attractive, you'll almost never hit all 3 shots. In fact, you'll be quite lucky to hit two since you're so vulnerable while locking on. It's good at long ranges, but the missile is so slow that in most cases, vehicles will just move to cover before you can hit them. Finally, I would like to just give you all some general engineering tips which I found quite useful while playing. While you should always be hunting armor, your secondary objective should be finding an ammo crate. You'll always need more ammo playing as an engineer, and as soon as you fire your first shot, you should hit the request ammo callout. If you're playing support with an ammo crate, then you should be prioritizing your ammo for engineers. Keeping them stocked up is critical if your team has any chance of dealing with vehicles. Sometimes your javelin will appear to randomly just fly up in the air after you fire. I believe this is because the enemy vehicle has deployed thermal smoke, but it doesn't render at long distances. Vehicles sitting at the edge of the map surrounded by Irish sentinels are just not worth your time and effort. You can try shooting the sentinels first with bullets, but usually the Irish who deployed them is a passenger and will just hop out and deploy more. It's frustrating to try and deal with them since the sentinels destroy almost anything you can throw at them. If you must, I recommend using the rail tank or a main battle tank to take care of them. You'll usually know where they'll be, so you'll be able to get the first shot on them and hopefully take them out. These players are usually pretty terrible, and while they will come out with decent KDs since they won't die, they usually don't come out with many kills either. Don't neglect to exploit your weapon proficiency. The accuracy boost to LMGs you get from crouching or going prone while playing engineer is very significant, especially at longer ranges. Try building that muscle memory up so that you can crouch before every gunfight. Don't forget about your repair tool. It can be used to massively support friendly armor, and just one player repairing can easily turn the tide of a tank battle. You should exploit any opportunity you can see to get some repairs in. Your teammates will absolutely love it and you'll rack up a bunch of points in the process. It can also be used to damage enemy vehicles. Use this in a pinch if they get too close. You can crawl up on top of the vehicle to stop them driving off from you, and if you don't randomly get road killed, you can deal a lot of damage with this. Hopefully now you're ready to create some scrap metal. 
and can help tip the scales in your favour on the battlefield. Dealing with vehicles is so critical and we need more people doing so. I hope this video has given you some tips that helped you decide which strategy you would like to use. Lastly I wanted to end with some comments for DICE, some suggestions in order to make infantry versus vehicles a little bit more balanced. I think that we should have an RPG weapon added to the game, something very similar to the M5 except with lower splash damage but higher damage against vehicles, especially when used against rear armour. This will give people a more effective non-lock-on weapon versus armour. As it stands, the M5 is just a little too weak. Add the s over from Portal as a missile launcher. Since it will give engineers more options, this laser guided weapon is a portable tow launcher. It's so much fun to use and has a high skill ceiling, and it's also a great option against choppers, which god knows we could use more options against. DICE also needs to reward vehicle kills on the scoreboard somehow. There is no scoreboard benefit from being the guy on your team who is clearing out enemy armour, other than the kills you would get with those vehicle kills. Since you're putting yourself in constant dangerous situations playing AT, you would think this would be reflected on the scoreboard. An additional column on the scoreboard would be nice, but the board is already looking a little cramped. How about having each vehicle destroyed be worth 3 kills, or having it worth 30 points on the very last column? Right now it's so unrewarding, you could be carrying your entire team with vehicles destroyed, but you'll still be very low on the board. Finally, please move the thermal smoke to share the same slot as the APS and the repair in the main battle tank and the real tank. Having two countermeasures on these vehicle makes any lock-ons useless against them, especially considering how little ammo engineers have to begin with. Also now that most drivers also have a repair tool, having them take more damage in general means that they'll need to risk getting out to repair more, opening them up to the vulnerable outside. Well, that's the end of the video. Let me know what you think about this guide and be sure to add any suggestions you have to the comments. As always, please like, comment and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. I'm hoping I can push myself over the 1000 sub mark. Let's see if we can do it. Take care of yourself, hope you have a wonderful day. See you on the battlefield.